If you haven't already, it's time to absolutely lock in to the crypto market because over the last few days, there have been some absolutely monumental developments that we need to talk about. And there are some very strong signs that we could be seeing an amazing period for altcoins over the coming months. So I want to talk about today how you can position yourself for that eventuality. We're going to take a look at some of the charts across a variety of altcoins and answer the question of whether it's too late to buy a lot of them after they've pumped off the floors or not. Take a look at some of the altcoins which haven't pumped a lot yet but could be part of the next rotation and really just summarize the last few days in general because it's been an absolutely massive period for crypto with the market positively rebounding from that 54.5 region all the way now up to around 65k which is where we currently sit at the time of recording today's video so strap in let's get on with the show i hope you enjoy i am coming at you with a video here from madrid i'm still on holiday but i'm kind of also doing some work but i absolutely love doing these shows the market is exciting again so even me being away it is time to lock in and I highly suggest that you do as well. So firstly, let's take a look at what has happened for Bitcoin. After two major capitulation events, we had one on the 24th of June and then another one on the 5th of July, Bitcoin has made a stunning reversal in the face of adversity, smashing back through the range low of 60k. And it's now flirting with the idea on the daily chart of reclaiming the 64k region, which actually is... One of the major levels that I have highlighted here in my Bitcoin daily range structure. So the really positive thing for Bitcoin here and obviously crypto in general as an extension of that is that this move has successfully reversed. We are now getting signs of confirmation. Confirmation for me is a hold above 60k. So there is leeway to come down on Bitcoin. But in even more positive news Testing this mid-range here is super important because this was the major pivot point which led us to attempting all-time highs for the third time. And if we can hold at this level, it could mean that a new test of all-time highs comes a lot sooner than people think. But of course, Bitcoin right now is super volatile. So I'm not putting too much weight on the short-term trading of Bitcoin. What I'm currently doing is focusing more on how I can position myself for a multi-month time frame in the market and that's more so going to be the focus of today's video if this move on bitcoin is real and we do see bitcoin all-time highs this year and altcoins start to catch a bid which they already are what are the coins that are going to outperform and how can you actually trade it to be a profitable crypto trader that is the focus of this video and that is generally the focus of my channel but bitcoin looking really good and i just want to take a moment here to make this point because in a really bearish market uh, it's easy to lose sight of this you have to remember that times of max bearishness are typically your strongest accumulation opportunities and times of max bullishness are typically your best opportunities to take profits or at least rotate into a more conservative portfolio waiting but time and time again, close to the bottom, people get super bearish. I remember on June 24th, when I did this tweet here that I was buying, I said, I'm sorry, you're all way too bearish. Time to dust off the ledger. Looks like I'm forced to bid. Then I did another tweet here where I on July 5th, where I said, it feels like a massive opportunity because although we had short-term sell pressure, there was so much to look forward to in the longer term. Now, if you look at when both of these tweets were actually posted, they were both on major capitulation wicks, one at 58k on June 24th, and the other pretty close to the bottom at 53.7k on July 5th. Since then, we have seen a very strong reversal, and it proves this point. I'm not saying I'm a genius here, but this is very general logic that I need you to understand in the market, that buying mass capitulation events, buying mass fear events, whilst you're in a macro uptrend, tends to be very strong risk reward. And these were the two days that I was very public about on Twitter and also on my YouTube shows, if you've been watching the channel, that I was actually going in and buying with size. So for me, I did get a lot of entries on the old coins that I speak about a lot on this channel during this period. For example, Pepe, which is reversed really well. Solana, I talked about some of the RWA old coins. Ethereum, which is obviously caught a really strong bid, etc. And I want you to remember that next time 
We're in a period of max bearishness, and you can also use it on the contrary. In a period of max euphoria, you can also look to counter trade sentiment. I can't stress enough that counter trading sentiment in this market is the most profitable endeavor that you can undertake. It is hard to execute because your emotions are going to get the better of you. When the market's super bearish or people are panicking, you are going to feel the urge to panic. But I must urge you to trade like a robot in this market. Remove your emotions and you're going to become such a better trader in the market. Look at what the technicals are saying. You're going to have to take bets when you're uncomfortable. I was not comfortable buying during these capitulation wicks. I felt terrible about it actually, but I did it because I thought the market was just way too bearish. And typically on those wicks, you get the best risk reward. Also on July 4th, I tweeted about Ethereum. I also did a YouTube video about Ethereum being one of the easiest mid to long-term setups right now because it had fully retraced its initial ETF pump. It was days away from an ETF approval. I'll talk about that slightly later in today's show. ETF flows were being really underestimated and it was showing relative strength. And since the time of that tweet, as you can see here, it was on July 4th, Ethereum has rallied from $2,840 all the way up to 3.4. And this was one of my strongest trades on the bounce. I took some profits here on the pump as we were testing that resistance at 3327, but I'm actually holding the rest because for me, my invalidation is a break of this trend. Until then, I'm happy to keep my long here into the ETH ETF. This is also something I talked about extensively in my Discord. The Discord community, by the way, is absolutely killing it right now over the last day. Uh, because we were able to play this bounce. A lot of people are making amazing profits in the group, which I just love to see. Congrats to all of you that are watching the video that, you know, listened to my content over the last couple of weeks and are in the Discord and were able to catch some of these really, really strong moves. The community's been absolutely amazing and we all do our best, me and the other analysts, to give our best read on the market and it stays like this where the fruits of our labor really come to fruition. Fabian, who's our small cap and macro analyst, he's absolutely amazing. Doc, who's our high time frame trader. Paradise, who's our low time frame trader, has absolutely been killing it. You can see some of the trades that he's shared over the last couple of days in the group have resulted in whiff plus 600%, Tia plus 200%. He's been absolutely smashing it. I want to remind you that we do have another very small intake for the Mars High Club. It's super limited, but we are going to be letting in 100 people only into the group in just eight days' time. So if you do want to be part of the Mars High Club and you've been waiting to get in, I know the wait list was super full last month and a lot of those people didn't manage to get in. This month, you have another chance only for the next eight days to click the link in the description, sign up for the wait list, and if you are approved, you will be let into the group on July 20. Fifth, So good luck to everyone signing up for the waitlist. If you are interested, I suggest you do it quickly. And I would love to have you as part of the community if you do get into the group over the coming month because we've got some amazing, amazing stuff planned in that group. And as the market starts to ramp up, it becomes a really important time to lock in focus and obviously having all those traders there and myself to help guide you. I think that's an amazing value add plus all the IDO giveaway, etc. opportunities that come up in positive market conditions because in a better market, obviously, we get access to more deal flow and it becomes much more profitable for the entire community, which is amazing. So now let's go back to the basics before we discuss the altcoins that are looking good right now, some of the altcoins that I'm actually accumulating right now. Let's talk about why Bitcoin actually pumped because it's important to understand market dynamics here so you know what's actually at play right now. And I actually believe what is building right now is one of the most obvious bullish setups I've seen in quite some time and is also, in my opinion, a massive, massive, massive opportunity. So why did Bitcoin pump? Well, I could give you some complex answer and I will go into some of the more in-depth market dynamics in just a minute here, but let me just give you the really simple one. Alvi Feldman's tweet here, which I actually shared on the show last week when Bitcoin was still sub 60k, here pretty much describes exactly what has happened. Avi said the way these sell-offs end is when the sellers run out of coins. Sounds obvious, but the key is to ignore where buyers step in. Basically, what he's saying here is when you see four selling events like Gox, like the German selling, typically the market ends up bottoming, not because there's buyers that step in for some random catalyst, but because the sellers are running out of coins 
and the market begins to A, front run, the sellers running out of coins, and B, the supply pressure coming onto the market diminishes, the market sees this, buying is met with less resistance because there's less overhead sell pressure, and then price action becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because crypto is so reflexive, as Bitcoin starts to move up in price, sentiment increases, and then that's where you get the buy side pressure. So I think a lot of time in crypto, when it comes to forced selling events, we need to stop thinking about who's going to buy and start thinking about who is actually left to sell. That is also just as important in the market. And oftentimes, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy due to crypto's reflexive nature and price ends up moving higher and higher and higher. And that's exactly what we've seen over the last couple of days with the German government's Bitcoin stocks dwindling down to almost zero. We've also seen Mt. Gox start to issuing creditor funds. This is going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. It is going to be spread out over the next few months which obviously is a supply headwind. But what you're seeing right now is a lot of people front running this. They've seen the Germans dump $3 billion worth of Bitcoin onto the market and now price is actually trading higher than when they started dumping. So I think the fear surrounding a lot of this forced selling is now starting to diminish. And as the creditors receive their repayments and as the selling starts to hit the market, people front run the selling being over and then the selling actually doesn't have as much impact on the market because you have this additional buy pressure now coming in. So I'm not worried at all about Gox or obviously the German Bitcoin now that their supply um, has dwindled because of this. It's a short-term headwind with very, very strong long-term tailwinds. And for me, that is an opportunity and that is a setup I become really interested in. But that's on the on the selling side, on the supply side. Let's also look at the demand side because the demand side also is important, of course. What we are now seeing is a monumental bid for the Bitcoin ETFs. Now, over the last week, it's obviously been really strong. We've seen 300 million yesterday. We've seen about a billion over the last 10 days or so. But that's not why it's so monumental. Why it's monumental is because the Bitcoin ETF has actually been one of the strongest performing ETFs in history. And it's this passive bid that we are now getting for the market that is structurally impacting the market in a way that we've never seen before. Never before have we had pension funds, big traditional financial funds, retail mum and dad investors that don't have access to crypto exchanges, passively bidding the market constantly. And the demand, the constant demand for Bitcoin has not slowed down. It's maintained pace. You can see this over the last couple of weeks. But what's also interesting is that even though June ticked into the red, the Bitcoin ETFs have now kicked into this two steps forward mode where we see flows actually starting to positively increase again. And a lot of crypto stocks and those sort of assets have also caught a bit on the equities market. So it is an interesting dynamic right now that you have this bidding from TradFi players that we've never seen before propping up the market. And once again, because crypto is reflexive, this becomes something that gets front run in the market. Because as flows increase, you can start to price in future flows and their impact on the market, which leads to higher prices in the short term. So there's some really interesting game theory at play here. But the bottom line is, long term, it's so, so, so bullish for Bitcoin. And it would take one hell of a supply hit it pretty much takes satoshi's original wallet dumping billions of dollars of bitcoin in my opinion to actually tangibly impact the supply demand dynamics of the market right now so that's also happening on the demand side what else has aided the demand side well this was one of the headlines which came out on july 15th which we saw the market respond positively to that was larry fink coming out and saying that he's a major believer in bitcoin so once again the head of the biggest asset manager in the world coming out and speaking glowingly about Bitcoin. Eric Balchunas says, it's hard to overstate how big a deal it is for Larry Fink, who runs an $11 trillion fund, to keep giving these full-throated endorsements of Bitcoin as a legitimate asset class for everyday portfolios. Buy-in from BlackRock, as well as the other legacy firms like Fidelity, gives boomers advisors comfort to make the allocation. Meaning, you know, a lot of these uh, wealth advisors, you know, pension funds, wealth management firms, Roth IRAs, etc. They might have been previously standoffish towards Bitcoin when you have major players like Fink and also Trump, which we'll get into in a minute, advocating for Bitcoin. 
it makes them more comfortable to give positive advice and it also makes the clients retail more comfortable to take that advice and buy Bitcoin. So Eric Botunas says here, that's why betting against or minimizing the clear to anyone with eyes and a brain early success of these ETFs has been done and will be done. Moving on to Trump, because obviously he's another advocate that's major for the market. I'm not going to comment too much over the events of the last week. Obviously, it was horrible to see. I really liked Rand's comment here, though. I thought it made a lot of sense. He said, Bitcoin is flying not because Trump may win the presidency. That was already priced in around 70%. It's flying because the events like yesterday show people that the establishment cannot be trusted. And that's also true. We have to remember that Bitcoin is also like a safe haven asset, a hedge against fiat. People don't trust the establishment. That's really the purpose and the underlying belief that has propelled Bitcoin to this point. Of course, now there's amazing stuff being built in crypto and it's gotten a lot bigger. But the underlying fundamentals here is that Bitcoin is an inflation hedge. It's a safe haven asset. It's a digital gold. And during times of unrest, whether that be civil unrest, economic unrest, or unrest with an event like what we saw last week, Bitcoin can actually perform really well in that environment. And obviously Trump, with his presidency odds now increasing, that is also positive for legacy markets, but also crypto considering, I think the general belief is that markets will perform better under Trump, but also he's an advocate for Bitcoin. He's actually speaking at the Bitcoin 2024 conference in Nashville on the 27th, if he's recovered. And that is monumental for crypto as well. Even if he doesn't speak, I don't think it matters because the very fact that he was willing to go and speak at the conference suggests that he's going to be a lot more positive for crypto than what the Democrats were. And we also saw here that Trump picked the Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as his running mate. Jordy Alexander says here that he's so bullish at this VP pick is hyperventilating. Few understand what a big deal this is, but I bet GCR is already somewhere out there market buying whatever left from the German sales. Not enough coins. Jordy's being a big proponent, if you watch my interview with him, that there's actually just not enough supply in the market. There's not enough Bitcoin. There's not enough Ethereum to actually counteract all of this buy pressure coming from demand for Bitcoin as a safe haven asset, coming from demand for Bitcoin as a liquidity sponge as an inflation hedge, or coming from the spot ETF bids, etc., it's just pure supply and demand. There just isn't enough coins and there's so, so much demand for the asset. That's been, you know, one of his big theories, the supply shock theory. And it can happen really quick, supply shocks. So that is something that could, in my opinion, and probably will take Bitcoin to 100K plus, maybe even 500K one day, obviously further down the track. And by the way, we'll get into altcoins in a second here, but a positive bit, the reason I speak about Bitcoin so much is A, I hold Bitcoin in my long-term portfolio. So I love Bitcoin as an asset and I think everyone, obviously not financial advice, you've got to make your own decisions, but I think everyone could benefit from considering a Bitcoin allocation in their long-term portfolio. I treat that separate from altcoins, but part B of that is that the rising tide lifts all ships. Bitcoin hitting 100k would be amazing for altcoins because speculation on alts typically happens after a major Bitcoin run and it's also better for liquidity. Because Bitcoin going up in price, people will FOMO into that. Retail will FOMO into that. They'll do it on centralized exchanges. They also have a lot of other crypto listings. So even though maybe a spot ETF is propelling a Bitcoin bid, it will also end up inevitably propelling an altcoin bid due to the additional liquidity in the market on centralized exchanges, which will be good for altcoins as well. So altcoins do become a more risk on proxy to trade Bitcoin. Over the longer term, a lot of alts will go to zero and Bitcoin can stay as a two, three, four, five hundred k asset. But in the shorter term, if you believe there's an upside on Bitcoin, you can play the alts. And that's why looking at what's happening in Bitcoin in terms of its dynamics is super important. We also have, as a positive catalyst here, lots of positives right now in the market, which is funny because vibes were so bad a couple of weeks ago. But that's why I did that tweet about this being a massive opportunity because there was just such a disconnect between what's actually happening longer term and the shorter term vibes. We're seeing the ETH ETF now getting a preliminary approval for at least three of the eight spot ETF issuers for them to potentially begin trading as soon as Tuesday. They're all expected to launch at the same time. So high probability that in a week's time, we will see a live trading 
ETH ETF. And if it isn't on Tuesday, it'll be probably within the next couple of weeks. So that is absolutely amazing for the market. And structurally, I don't think you can underestimate that either. That's one of the reasons why I did take that ETH long and I was very public about it because I just felt like given the fact that the ETF pump was retraced, it was being severely underestimated uh, in the face of a monumental ETF listing. I mean, it's the first altcoin. Remember this, Bitcoin isn't an altcoin. It's the first altcoin to ever be listed on the stock exchange. That lends credibility to ETH as an asset class. You'll probably see a Larry Fink, these big players starting to endorse Ethereum more as it becomes more legitimized. And that's a great thing for the altcoin market. ETH has a much more potent wealth effect because of the ability to trade ETH on chain and the fact that a lot of other alts are denominated in ETH pools on chain. So if ETH does catch a bid, even one eighth, one fifth of what Bitcoin caught, the impact on alts would be seismically bigger, which is the exciting thing about the ETH ETF. So it's very good for altcoins, um, mid, mid to long term, but obviously short term, it's also a major catalyst uh, for the market. And going into the suite once again, it's obvious by now, I think this is a very clear, bullish, longer term setup. And now we're going to talk about how you can start to position yourself. Considering the vibes are back, I believe it's time to now lock in, focus on the market, focus on positioning. And now I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. It is an exciting period in the market because we've just had so much bearishness. And to see the bearishness get reversed so quickly and the vibes come back so quickly. I mean, it felt like on, on crypto Twitter that the vibes would never return. Things were so negative, but to see it come back so quick, it's, it's, it's a nice nostalgic reminder because this happens time and time again, that the markets, uh, the markets can reverse super, super quick in terms of their sentiment, which is good because you hold solace in the fact that when the market is down, things are never as bad as they seem. Even during FTX, that was the bottom. Things weren't as bad as they seemed and buyers were rewarded. And conversely, things often aren't as good as they seem either. Uh, when Bitcoin absolutely skyrockets and altcoins go up 30, 40, 50% a day, when euphoria really starts to hit max greed and you see, all, you know, whiff on the sphere and a million meme coins launching, that's probably also a sign to take some profits. And I was actually vocal. If you go back in my content, watch my videos from March, I was very vocal about the fact I was also taking heavy profits. There was even a video where I... I think when Bitcoin was 68K, said that I was expecting a 58K Bitcoin. And we ended up getting there twice, uh, despite at the time a lot of people giving me backlash for that video. But that's just how it is. You're incentivized as a content creator to match the market sentiment. And if you don't, you get angry comments. But I think people that watched those videos would have been uh, in a pretty good position because now you'd be in, in cash, presumably, after taking profits. And now you can actually re enter the market at better prices. and set yourself up for this next leg. So speaking of the next leg, how are altcoins looking? Let's run through it quickly. Altcoins pivoting really nicely, just like Bitcoin actually reclaimed their range low on the total chart. You got to keep in mind that we still are significantly off highs for alts. We're up, a, we're down around 20% since those highs, but a lot of alts are down 50, 60, 70% because there's been a lot of altcoin fragmentation during this period between March and today, the last six months have seen a lot of new launches in the market, which has resulted in, although the percentage may be not dropping as much for the total market cap, many altcoins dropping quite a lot. So there's actually a lot of opportunity in the market despite this bounce, because many alts are still extremely beat down and there are some that I think could perform really strongly if the market catches a bit. And look, I'm not just targeting, reclaiming this high again. Altcoins, in my opinion, are a very strong chance to clear a trillion this cycle. And that's pretty conservative. And if that's the case, I mean, what's that from here? That's a 57% move. You're going to see some alts 10, 20 X, and we're going to make a crap ton of money uh, from watching these shows, from being in the discord, from being a part of my community during that period. So good morning GM to future millionaires, because, <laughs> because if that is the case, I think there is definitely huge upside on the table. That doesn't mean that uh, you should not take profits as the market pumps, holding out for the one trill, because you know if we fall short at 800, you don't want to be caught holding the bag. You want to be laddering out, making sure you protect your capital base. Don't want anyone to lose money in this market. I don't want to lose money in this market. We want to take profits, but knowing that we do have that upside and potentially even higher, I just don't want to you know, shove hopium down your throat. But you know if we do make a new all-time high, that's above the 1.1 trillion mark on total three, that would be 
absolutely an amazing opportunity and it would make now from a macro perspective uh, a very good time to accumulate if that is your belief if you actually believe we're going to a trillion on the old coin market cap then this general region is a great time to accumulate quality assets right it's all about your objectives and your outlook on the market my outlook personally is that we're not going to see and the last couple of months bought us time an altcoin peak until 2025 maybe not even q2 i was thinking maybe it would be q1 maybe even q4 this year but i think the we actually got bought time by the bad price action i'm actually targeting a 2025 top which would mean this period you can kind of step back a little bit and really trade the market from a macro point of view. I think that's actually the best way to approach the market. Obviously, I love short-term trading. I love short-term opportunities. I share a lot of them on the shows and in my Discord, but most of the money is made by buying fear and holding and and, and just selling extreme greed eventually when we do see this uh, period of extreme expansion. And that expansion, if you're asking where's it going to come from, may very well be led by the current dynamics around Bitcoin and ETH, um, driven by obviously the ETFs and all the other positive catalysts we've spoken about here. So when we talk about altcoins here, I think we've got to start with Ethereum. This is one that I talked about on, as you can see, the 4th of July here when ETH was at 2800. I did a very long Discord post about why I was accumulating. Since then, obviously we are in nice profits, but I don't think the run for Ethereum is done quite yet. From a technical perspective, you do have a major support now at 3341. That is both this diagonal uptrend that we reclaimed as well as the major horizontal level from August 2021 that I'm watching. So this is great because we actually didn't make new lows on ETH. We bounced off lows. That gave us an opportunity to enter. We've broken back above and we've wicked down and had a bullish confirmation retest of this level. For me, Ethereum should lead the market if we do see expansion to the upside. Could there be downside on the ETF launch? Due to sell the news, possibly. But I think looking at it from a multi-month perspective, ETH will be trading higher, above $4,000, in my opinion, this year. So Ethereum is one that, from a safer point of view, I'm playing in my portfolio from a trading and a spot perspective. But clearly, not all of you would like to just long Ethereum and call it a day because there are bigger opportunities in the market. And I understand that and, and I take advantage of these as well. So now let's talk about if Ethereum goes to 4K, what is actually going to outperform? I want to split this up into two categories. One, looking for altcoins with strength, relative strength and trading them. And two, bidding quality alts responding from high time frame levels. These may not have short-term strength, but from a high time frame perspective, look good. The comment I want to make here on the look for strength section, and we'll go through the exact altcoins, is you're likely going to see the same narratives outperforming this time around. I don't think market dynamics have shifted much since March, to be completely honest. I think all the altcoins that were performing well in March, if the market catches a bid over the next few months, a heavy bid, right, now that the vibes are back, I think a lot of the same alts, the same narratives, there are a few new ones, of course, but just the general narratives, I think, are going to be the same. This is corroborated perfectly by the shorter term data as well. In the last week, as we've seen this bounce from Bitcoin into the mid 60Ks again, what are the alts that have outperformed? AI, meme coins, DeFi, L1s. But the main two strong outliers by far are memes and AI. How many times have you heard me on this channel talk about memes and AI? It is not, they aren't going away. They are not going away. They are still the top performers on bounces. They are still the best coins to long on major dips. Specifically the meme coins. The market definitely is favoring the memes right now. And it just really goes to show what the current state of the market is. But I think a more important lesson here is long coins, at least focus on longing coins that exhibited relative strength in March but also on the bounce have also shown strength that they are still catching a bid. These will likely outperform. I think you'll see a lot of people chasing, right? Which means, oh, Pepe's already run. I'm going to now chase some other altcoin in some other sector, some L2 interoperability aggregator, because it ha that hasn't run and it's going to pump eventually, right? I don't think that's the way to approach the market. I actually think strength will continue to outperform. Winners long winners in this market. That's what we saw in March. Uh, I personally did really well, and I know a, a lot of my subscribers did as well off 
playing the major trends, whether it be at the time, you know, memes or AI and just longing the leaders there. And for, for meme coins, it was as simple as longing Pepe. For AI, it was as simple as longing old, old like render. And those outperformed, even though a lot of people were trying to catch the low cap rotations. But when the market reverses, they actually get hit the hardest and they actually uh, bleed versus the leaders. So I would look generally speaking, to still be positioning myself in sector leaders. Now for meme coins, you have four that really stand out. Mog, Popcat, they're the hottest right now. They're, they're the new cat coins, which are really popular. You of course also have Whiff and Pepe. I like all of these as assets to hold in my portfolio. I like them because they are meme coin leaders and it becomes very hard to speculate on the lower cap meme coins. I think Pepe is probably the safest it's the one I hold the most of, and I've talked about a lot, bounced amazingly off this level that I called out as a buy zone on the YouTube channel, as well as the Discord. That has responded the strongest out of pretty much any altcoin, up 50%, and it's also started to reclaim this key level at the 0.10 zone. Could it come back down and retest? Yes. If it does, I think that would be a good buy zone, as you have invalidation, as it could potentially go up and test that all-time high again. I see Pepe as an asset... If Bitcoin goes to 100k um, as something that could 10x from its six bill market cap to 60, 70 bill, that's not out of the realms of possibility at all, considering that's around where Doge sat at its all time high last cycle. Another coin that's showing strength as it has all cycle is Solana, still becomes and remains the bona fide L1 play in the market. Nothing's really changed there. Any major pullbacks on Solana, I'm adding. Interestingly, in the short term, you can also look to play this 150 zone. This is a key level that we've now broken back above and we've retested. So you have invalidation there if you are a shorter term trader, but obviously uh, you don't want to be taking on a lot of leverage if you have a, a high margin of error above, a high gap above that, that support. You want to be getting close to the support. So that may mean waiting for another entry on, on major pullbacks. One thing I want to say, generally speaking, when it comes to accumulating altcoins right now is that although time is ticking, and you definitely have to lock in. There's not a rush to ape everything in sight right now because I do think we will still see pullbacks at some point. And I still believe in the ethos of buying fear in the market and not greed. I wouldn't say we're greedy now at all. I would say from a macro point of view, we're actually fearful or not fearful, but neutral. And a lot of retail isn't back in the market. So you're not buying greed if you're buying now. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but generally speaking, those major capitulation days in the market, like the two major buy days that I had tend to be the best risk reward buys in the market. Keep that in mind when it comes to going in with size. Obviously, DCAing strong alts, you can never really go wrong from a cycle perspective, right? But from a shorter term point of view, you, you have to have a plan. That's the most important thing. Some other strong alts are in the RWA sector. MakerDAO is one that really comes to mind, pivoting amazingly off these two... 0.2 level all the way up to 3k. I actually think make it out can continue to outperform. DeFi is catching a bid, but most importantly, MKR is viewed as one of the premier RWA assets and it has a lot of utility. And it's an older coin with all of its dilution in the market. So it's a bit of alpha for you. I think some of the alts that are going to perform the best are from the category of alts that don't have any sell pressure and have diluted pretty much all of their coins. Because when these catch a bid, there's just no overhead sell pressure so they can go up much more aggressively. You can make the same argument for high FDV, low float coins that have unlocks in like, you know, six to 12 months. I talked about them a few days ago. But for me, I'm trying to avoid alts that have heavy unlocks because I just think when it comes to allocating capital in crypto, you have to be efficient. There's so, many, so much opportunity in the market. I'd just rather be in the coins that have less overhead sell pressure because I want to outperform the market. There's no point being in this market if you're going to underperform. You you really want to strive to outperform Bitcoin. And I think a lot of alts won't manage to do that. The ones with crazy dilution. Going on from RWA, Pendle is one that bounced nicely off the 330 zone. This is actually still relatively beat down from its highs of around 40%. So you are still getting coins at major pullbacks. Despite the recent bid, you're still getting opportunities on a lot of these coins. Ondo is in a similar boat. It's down from its highs. It had deviation below the dollar region, but it's now reclaiming, which is a which is a positive sign. I think if the ETH ETF goes live next week, 
and we see RWA start to come back in the forefront as ETH is viewed as like a tokenization uh, layer with Larry Fink talking a lot about uh, tokenization. I think RWA could catch a bid. It falls into this category of altcoins that performed really strongly in March, RWA coins in general, and have also exhibited relative strength. So when it comes to relative strength alongside memes, AI, I think RWA plays as well will probably continue to outperform. So that's category one of altcoins. Category two is bidding quality alts responding from high time frame levels. Alex Becker here says, during meme season, everyone took the totally overkill pessimistic attitude on utility crypto. They're all scams. Utility failed. Because of this, we're looking at some of the wildest undervaluation on micro alts ever before a big rally. Countless nine figure coins are, start, are sitting at five to 10 mil market caps. I don't really focus on five to 10 mil market caps so much. You can. You can probably bid strong coins with good teams, good fundamentals, conduct your SWOT analysis, get a thesis down for some of these smaller caps, and you can probably bid it with a smaller percentage of your portfolio and uh, in six months do quite well off that. For me, the point of this tweet I want to highlight more so than the five to 10 mil part is this part. The fact that everyone has been hating on utility and gloating about meme coins. I think utility coins are going to go on a run at some point. And we're already seeing the market start to wake up in terms of its responsiveness to bid some of these coins. Becker says he thinks speculation on utility will return with an absolute fire. So that is definitely something that I'm monitoring. And utility coins, a lot of them are now at high time frame levels and are quality in terms of their fundamentals. So if they have quality fundamentals and are at high time frame support levels, those are type the types of coins I'm interested in. One of them is Rune that I talked about in my Discord here. I posted my full thesis. That's something I also do in the Mars High Club. I give portfolio updates. I posted that at, I think, what was it? 350. We're now seeing Rune sitting at $4.10. So it's bounced nicely off that support level. Still, from a macro scheme of things, hasn't really caught a strong bid, uh, but is one that I'm, I'm bullish on. This isn't a utility coin, but it fits in the same category of coins that are at major high time frame levels that I also posted in my Discord. That's Foxy. See here, I posted this at its support. Since then, it's also reacted very strongly off that support, going from 0.01 to 0.014. Four, time and time again, we've seen this bounce off high time frame support. And these are the kind of setups that I like. Alts that I have a fundamental belief in from a narrative point of view. And they've retraced to major high time frame levels. They've built a strong floor. And this is the second category of coins that I, I like apart from the relative strength coins. There are a lot of them. I won't go through them all in today's video. You will have to fish for yourself a little bit because I can't sit here and go through every chart, but there are a lot of coins that are beat down at high time frame levels that are from very strong narratives. I've given you a couple. I talked about a few in my last show. If you haven't watched that, if you're just returning now, because the market's bullish, I have been putting out alpha. It's getting less views because the market hasn't been as bullish, but I do recommend, I'll leave a link in the description to watch the last show I did a few days ago, because that one was really important and went through a lot of alts that I uh, have in my current buy list and some of them as i spoke about were these lower float high fdv coins that have been underperforming like layer zero which i think because they don't have many unlocks soon could perform well there are also coins like nine heroes which are i mean nine for example is one of the leading gaming coins it just got smacked because of unlocks at some point quality projects have to bounce and we're already seeing this on nine today bouncing 25 percent. so that's a gaming project i really like i'm still holding i was in the seed round Still holding my entire stack. So I'm bullish on that one. Overall in the market, I don't think there is a need to ape in, as I just discussed. The bullish sign is that we just flipped the resistance on the others chart as well as total three. If we do start to break this diagonal region here, I think we could see big expansion up to this next resistance level at the 300 billion mark. So it could be a really exciting time for alts. I've been making major buys on alts during those capitulation wicks as i've discussed if you didn't buy into those capitulation wicks taking a dca approach in this market is never a bad idea make sure whenever you enter a trade you have a clear invalidation this can be a fundamental or a price invalidation and clearly state your time horizon because where most people go wrong 
is now that the market picks up and alts are pumping, they ape into alts that are pumping. And if the market ever gives you a pullback, you start to question your conviction in these alts because the only reason you bought them was because they were pumping. That shouldn't be the case. You should have a time frame a thesis and a belief and a conviction in these alts. If you don't have a conviction in an altcoin, don't buy it because there are just so many good altcoins in the market. So you should actually be trying to narrow down and concentrate your portfolio into a basket of alts that you're super confident in. But the TLDR of today's video is, I think there's a very clear longer term setup at play here. The vibe is shifting. So it's time to lock in because we have now seen bearish sentiment shift into bullish sentiment. And that is a powerful Thing in crypto and things can move quick because of how reflexive the market is so time to lock in the market if you want to lock in with me there's a link in the description below to join the wait list we're letting in 100 people to my exclusive discord community in just eight days time if you're one of the first 100 to sign up to the wait list you're going to get in and get all the amazing alpha from myself and the contributors there if you're serious about making it in this market if we do see the market uptick over the next couple of months you're going to want to be in that discord I'm going to see you in the next video. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Peace out.